Hi, welcome back to Repairing Lawnmowers for Profit. In this video, I'm going to give you some technical data for this ever popular Briggs & Stratton 35 Classic Engine. I get a lot of questions on the channel for specific things like uh, torque settings. I also get ones for actually the gap, the gap between the coil and the flywheel. So in this video, I'm going to tell you which spark plug you should be using, the correct type. I'm going to give you the clearance for the gap as well. I'm going to give you the valve clearances for the inlet and the exhaust valve. As I've said, I'm going to give you the gap for the coil, between the coil and the flywheel. I'm going to tell you which type of oil you should be using, how much to use, and the torque wrench settings for the flywheel nut, big end bolts, and cylinder head bolts. So let's get started. Okay, so we'll start with the simple things. What you want to be using for this type of lawnmower, this Briggs & Stratton 35 Classic uh, NGK spark plugs. The actual type you want to be using are these B2LM. I think there'll probably be a link in the description to these. So your NGK ones, B2LM, these are what are specified by Briggs & Stratton to be used. And I've said this on loads of videos, I've never actually had one of these fail, they've always been fantastic. And just a quick note as well, all these specs I'm giving you now are leaving the description of the video as well, just so you can go and refer to it there. As I've said, these NGK plugs, the actual gap you want, the spark plug gap of this is 0.76mm or 0 0.030 inches so 30th of an inch I believe that is and if I'm honest with you unless I've seen one of these it's been bent in the machine already I take these out of the box I put them in the mower I tighten them up and I've never had a problem so the next question I'm frequently asked is about the actual valves the inlet and the exhaust valves a lot of people want to know the actual setup of these and the clearances of them which is a quite strange question because you can't really alter these on a flat this is a flat head engine it's not an overhead valve engine so you can't quickly tweak these settings the only way you can change the gap is to actually pull the valves out and grind the stems down which is something I've done on a video in the past it's never been particularly successful but for anybody who wants the specifications of the clearances it's inlet valve is 0.13 to 0.18 millimeters and the exhaust is 0.18 to 0 0.23 millimeters so there your clearances if you wanted to check that you have to take this exhaust off there's a little hidden doorway in there you can get in turn the actual engine by hand and you can measure the clearances and the most common question I'm getting this year is what is the correct gap between the ignition coil and the flywheel and I'm going to tell you what that is but I'm going to show you something as well show you quickly show you how to set that up and why it doesn't matter within a certain margin why it doesn't matter so much but i'll give you the i'll give you the specs first for anybody who just wants that the correct air gap is 0.15 to 0.25 millimeters so there's quite a bit of a tolerance there and i'm going to show you why it doesn't matter too much and i'll quickly show you how to set that up on this mower as well so i'm going to quickly take this cover off and show you how to do this as a Good rule there, just remove this out of the way as well. Um, there's only three bolts to take out here. Just quickly unzip these. That's the beauty of these real simple, kind of old fashioned now engines. They're so simple to get at. You can get to everything you need. Basically take these three bolts out here. We can, we can lift off this whole cover here and I can get to this actual gap here and I'll show you in a little bit more detail. So what people are looking for is the clearance here between this ignition coil here and this flywheel and as you can probably tell here just on the video you can just see there that there's hardly any gap at all i'm going to show you the way i set this as i said the uh, description of this video will have the specs and i'll write them in there for you so i guess you could put your feeler gauge in there but i'm going to show you how i set these up and why it doesn't really make too much of a difference it's a bit of a rough and ready way that i do it and i've never had a problem so I often wonder when I see the comments coming on the channel, I read quite a lot of them and I answer as many as I can. I often wonder why people ask certain questions. And I would think with something like this, it's because it's maybe not running correctly, it's maybe revving up and down and things like that. And they're just trying to find a fix. And sometimes I think the coil is broken. But I'll tell you, I think in 12 years of doing this, I think I've had one bad coil. So you'd be very, very unlucky if this coil stopped working. It's more likely that you'll have a break in the wire or the wire won't go to the kill switch at the back here or the kill switch is dirty at the back where the wire ends up so check those things before changing your actual coil but if I undo this now and we'll just leave this slack I'll just quickly show people how to set this up I can undo this now and you can see I can turn see how it all wobbles about I can turn this flywheel like this look and see how the magnets grip it there so if I move it away from the magnets like this what I generally do is I'll just get a bit of card it's normally from a like a spark plug box or something like that so even something um, yeah I think it's normally a spark plug 
box I just pick one up or a playing card no a lot of people use a playing card and I honestly just do this and I just get a piece of card and I just put it in the gap so I wind this round to where the magnets haven't got hold of it so it's nice and loose like that drop a piece of card in the gap like this and then I turn the flywheel till the magnets gra grab the ignition coil like that you see how it's got hold of it and when it's got hold of it that kind of sets the gap for you as I said there's, there's quite a, a margin for error on this and um, what I do then is just nip these back up tighten these up this should still move make sure it does nice aeroplane going over I don't know what that is today they always go over when I'm filming um, set that up what I do then is I just turn this till the card comes out like that and then I've got a nice even gap between this actual ignition coil and the flywheel that's how I do it as I said the technical aspects of everything and all the description you want will be in the description of the video so let's move on to oil what you need for these is 0.6 of a litre of SAE 30 oil you'll find this in your, your local stores probably Walmart or Asda or anywhere you can find lawnmower oil if you look on it it normally says SAE 30 oil it's not 0.6 litres I think I've said in most videos it's like half a pint and I get loads of comments going no it's not it's this well the exact measurement is 0.6 litres of SAE 30 okay here's a joke for you let's talk about talk so the big end bolts on this machine are 11 nm or newton meters that's the big end but i'm going to show you the cylinder head as well i'm going to show you the flywheel as well so get a lot of questions on that so for the flywheel torque settings what i'm talking about here a lot of people message me and they ask me really they just want to know how much to tighten this up this actual nut on the top here so the reason for that i think a lot of people want to obviously they've probably taken it off and want to put it back on just trying to do a good job but again i think i get these questions people thinking it might be slack or too tight and if they make an alteration it might help the machine run correctly and at the end of this video i'll give you a brief guide as to how to get one of these running again and leave a video in the top right hand corner of a full breakdown tear down of a video and how to put it back together but for this one this is a flywheel one i'm going to show you something underneath here as well and it's probably the, the main reason for taking off the flywheel. So if you remember back to the beginning of the video, I removed this spark plug lead off here. And I've got a bit more in depth than I wanted to in this video. But it just goes to show that you can easily forget to do this. So I'll do it at the beginning because the next thing I'm going to be doing is actually spinning this. And of course it probably won't start, but take no chances. So I'm going to take this actual nut off here. And I'm going to show you the main reason for actually most people taking the flywheel off. And wanting to know the torque settings for the nut when they put it back on. We'll take that off. You can see here, I'm going to show you the flywheel key. So if you've got a lawnmower that's got spark and got fuel and still doesn't start, I'm going to show you a reason it might not work. Generally, lawnmowers need a few things to function. They need spark, they need fuel, they need a bit of airflow. And really, you will get most mowers running if you can get those things working. But the other thing you need is timing. Because if these magnets here don't spin this flywheel around correctly and it doesn't time at the correct actual specific time it's supposed to with this coil you'll get a spark at the incorrect time and of course it won't fire the engine now the reason that can happen is you actually have a keyway in the top of here the top of the crankshaft you can see how this is nice and square and lined up if I just move around here a bit you get a good idea you see how this shaft has a cutout section this is nicely in line if you've got one that's kind of off center just a little bit even you can throw the timing out so your lawnmower won't start so if you've got a really nice really nice mower that's got spark and it's getting fuel and you can't understand why it's starting i would suggest having a look there and i'll, I'll show you this while i mean there's a kill switch on the back of here when you pull this lever at the top here it pulls this out of the way this is probably wants cleaning off a little bit if you're not getting a, a disconnection there your lawnmower won't start so what people do is to take it off they replace this keyway and they want the correct Torx settings for putting the actual flywheel back on. So if you all follow the tips on the channel that I've provided over the last 12 years, you might also have your lawnmower purring like a kitten. Where are you going, Jersey? You don't want to be going in there, do you? Oh, it's quite windy today. Have you come out to help mower man? Come on then. What, are you going to go find me torque wrench for me? What are you doing here? Come on, I'm trying to help people here. 
Leave me a comment if you or you don't need to go on there. Leave me a comment if you're enjoying the video. If you've got any specific questions, by the way, just leave me a comment. And you know, don't just ask me how to do something. Tell me why you want to do it as well. So it often leads to a, a a much clearer answer I can give you to help you get fixed up and get your mower running again. So I'm going to tell you the last talk setting here. I'm going to go in the garage. I'm just going to talk you through a few things to try and help you get your mower up and running again if you're struggling as well. So stick around to the end and uh, I'll give you a few pointers on this type of engine. I'm going to just tell you quickly that these cylinder head bolts are 16 newton meters. These are the ones that are in here. I get this question a lot. So I can see myself linking to this. These are 16 all around here. I've said this a few times, but all these specs will be in the description of the video. So you might be wondering how I know all these technical specifications. Well, when I first started repairing these about 12 years ago, I bought this book and it's fantastic. This is a Haynes book and it covers uh, quite a few different engines. I don't know if you can still get it. If I can find a link, I'll probably put it in the description of the video. But you've got a good list here. You've got um, the Briggs 4, you've got the 55s, you've got the Classics, you've got even got the Honda GCV 135s that you get on the Honda Easy Lawnmowers. Tecumseh even, probably haven't read enough of that section. If you've not seen any of my Tecumseh videos, they're a real treat because uh, I've always struggled a little bit with those if I'm honest. So, if I go to here, at the beginning of each section, it gives you all the specs, which is absolutely brilliant. So that's how I've got it, and it, it, it's a really good little book, and I read through all this, or most of it, when I first got it, and started repairing these for profit, and I've never really got that in depth with all these um, internal parts, but it's got me by, and I've made some good profit over the years, and a lot of it was um, basically from reading a book. So having repaired probably hundreds of this type of mower, I know the ins and outs of this and I know when I get a particular type of question in the comments section, which I'm always grateful for by the way, I know the kind of going down the wrong path if they give me a little bit of uh, a little bit more information about why they need the, the actual torque setting for something. Often it's because the lawnmower's not running correctly, it might be revving up and down, or a lot of the time they'll want to know where the spring's gone, how you can tension things. The biggest problem with this type of lawnmower is it has a diaphragm and gasket set in the carburetor. So if you've got a lawnmower that revs up and down, most people try and, and I've done this years ago, most people try and, you know, tinker with the springs and fix it that way and think there must be something wrong, which is a logical thing to think, but a lot of people have never managed to fix a lawnmower and it, it created great profit for me once I learned that by changing a diaphragm and gasket on a lawnmower such as this, you could do it for around two pounds and you could basically double your money on every lawnmower you've got. This is still a really profitable sideline for anybody, even in 2022. If you can get these in and stop them revving up and down, get them running nice again, it will really help. And in the top right hand corner, now you will see a card, and it's a card that takes you to a full teardown of actually how to take the whole thing apart, service it, put it back together, and get it running nicely and sell these for profit. So I don't do too many videos here on the channel anymore, but I was at a little bit of a loose end this afternoon, so I came out just to answer some comments I regularly get about talk settings. Um, any questions at all, I really want to hear from you. Leave me some context as to what your lawnmower's doing and why you need a specific question answering and I'll do my very best to get back to you. I do get back to as many people as I can. Hopefully by the time this video goes out, I'm at 25,000 subscribers. As I say, I do very little on the channel now, but I do appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. So until next time, thanks for watching and I will see you again.